The Arab Spring uh, sparking revolutions throughout the Middle East as protesters took to the streets. And a key factor in those protests, women, many of them risking their personal safety to make their voices heard. But graphic images like this one last year in Cairo show the brutality that women faced as they try to improve their lives and their future generations. Now, one year after Arab Spring, many people are asking a key question. Are the women in that region any better off? Well, joining me to talk about that, somebody who's been on the front lines of those protests, as well as seeing the violence firsthand, Egyptian journalist Mona El Tahawi. She's in Cairo today, and she is there for a march that is marking International Women's Day. Mona, it's good to see you. Um, first of all, people should be reminded you were a part of those protests. Uh, you received beatings. Uh, you were sexually assaulted. Uh, you know what's going on on the ground there. Do we have reason to celebrate today? How are things for women where you are? Uh, I'm not hearing, Mona. Uh, Egyptian, uh, okay. fellow Egyptian women in parliament today. And um, the, the biggest point we wanted to make is that women have been integral to this revolution from the very beginning. And that without women's rights and without women's participation, this revolution will not work. And one of the, and another important point that we wanted to make was this sticker that I'm wearing right here, which is a demand that at least 50% of Egypt's constitutional committee be comprised of women. So those were very, very loud messages that we were chanting as we were walking to Parliament House today. And Mona, what is the, what is the tone like? What is the mood like there? Because previously, when you were marching on the streets, there was a lot of fear and there was a lot of violence. Well, you know, this today, last year, when women tried to hold a similar protest in support of women's rights, they were beaten, they were sexually assaulted, and they were chased down the street. And the violence against women just got worse and worse since then, because tomorrow, March the 9th, is the first anniversary of the date when the Egyptian army broke up Tahrir Square and arrested activists, tortured and beat most of them, but more shamefully subjected at least 17 of the female activists to so-called virginity tests which are basically sexual assaults. And, and, and the violence continued because we saw many women who were beaten. As you mentioned, I was beaten, my arms were broken, I was sexually assaulted. And then this all climaxed in that iconic image now of that woman being dragged through Tahrir Square, stripped down to her underwear with soldiers jumping on her chest. After that march, thousands of Egyptian women marched through Tahrir and said Egyptian women are the red line. And that, and that caused the one and only apology from the Egyptian Supreme Military Council, which runs this country, the military junta, that was the one and only time they apologized. Now, so, during the march today, I spent most of the time walking to parliament with a woman called Samira Ibrahim, mm -hmm. who was suing the military junta for those so-called virginity tests. And where is that now, Mona? I mean, you've gotten an apology here. Is, uh, where is that particular case? I mean, are they still carrying out these so-called virginity tests? Right. Well, I mean, that, that apology was very rare, and that apology is definitely not enough, because what's happening now in Samira's case, Samira's case achieved two things. One, it ended once and for all these so-called virginity tests in mm. military jails, because they used to be apparently standard procedure. Mm. But two, what, what is showing Egypt now, and I've seen the way re people react to this young woman. She's only 26 years old. She is a 26-year-old Egyptian woman who's standing up to 19 generals in our military junta and saying, I demand justice. Her case, unfortunately, because it's so sensitive, keeps being delayed, keeps being delayed. They were supposed to have a verdict yesterday, but the verdict was postponed until March the 11th. But as we were marching to Parliament, I can tell you that young woman is a de very determined young woman. Yes. And she knows exactly why she and other women were subjected to these sexual assaults. As she said, the Egyptian military and Egyptian security think that they will silence us and shame us into going back home, and we will not be silenced, and we will not be shamed. All right. Mona el Tawi, thank you very much, Mona. Obviously, uh, there is some progress that is made as uh, brave women come forward. There is still a lot of uh, progress to, uh, to go. Thank you very much, Mona.